Hello everybody, it's Wyvern here with another bit of Total War Warmer 2 Quick Match Gameplay. This time around we are on the Plateau of the Dead playing as the Beastmen against the Vampire Counts. And this is, in many ways, probably the Beastmen's worst matchup, and so I wanted to try something new. Uh, in case you're wondering why it's their worst matchup, well, Vampire Counts bring a lot of fear, terror, and Mortis Engines to the field. Um, Unlike a lot of other factions, you don't really have great single model entities, you have giants, uh, and you don't have great ranged options to really go after or shut down things like the Mortis Engine. Um, for example, a faction like Norska, uh, which is in many ways comparable to the uh, to the um, Beastmen, has, has better options to cleave through that chaff, and they also have much better uh, units for killing things, such as the Mortis Engine, they can bring Throg, they can bring Mammoths, all that sort of stuff, which is, which is very nifty, but as Beastmen you don't have those options, so what I decided to do here is a bit of an experimental build, and I'm not sure this is that competitive, my opponent didn't actually bring a Mortis Engine here, though, still very wide, chaff-heavy composition, but I wanted to try something out, so, for my Lord, Morgor, nothing to say there, he's actually pretty stripped down, doesn't even have his leadership buff, all he's got is his two summons of Chaos Spawn. A front line of Ungor Spears, so these guys are not going to be winning anything. But uh, they're there to provide a shield for these three units of Chaos Spawn, and I'm experimenting with these guys, seeing if I can make them work. Um, they've obviously got very high weapon strength, not much of that is AP, if we look, 130, of which only 40 is AP, so uh, less than a th less than a third of it is AP, which is a little unfortunate, but they do apply poison, which will make it harder to kill my Ungors, and uh, of course, they're unbreakable, so they're they're not going to rout. Uh, if everything else does, they won't, so between uh, Morgur and the th three Chaos Spawn, we've got a lot of unbreakable on the field. We also have Break Shaman of Beasts, so hopefully nuke blobs with uh, Flock of Doom, as well as uh, Wiston's Wild Form from the buffs, Break Shaman of Death with Soul Blight and Spear Leech, uh, and of course both of them have all of their abilities to buff Winds of Magic and Gen. They're also mounted on Chariots just to get a little bit more damage against Infantry, because this comp doesn't have the greatest tools to deal with a lot of chaff, I'd say, or a lot of heavy infantry like, say, Graveguard. For the secondary line, we've got a unit of Minotaurs with great weapons, as well as some Ungor Spears with shields, just to provide some additional anti-large. The Sons of Goros are out on the flank to provide some further uh, AP and mobility and uh, magic damage to deal with magical units, or ethereal units, and then two units of centigrades with great weapons, or throwing axes here just to hopefully pressure any mortis engines, but my opponent didn't bring one, so that was a little lucky for me. But uh, nonetheless, this comp's still very scary because fear, terror, they are the bane of beastmen. Um, and if, my, if your opponent goes with some heavy cav, heavy cav of course very potent against beastmen, the vampires essentially have everything they could ask for. Um, and there's very little beastmen can really do. There's no squishy backlines for them to chase after. There's no, um, there's no tools they really have. Uh, I have tried Malagor unsuccessfully in this matchup uh, for his uh, AOE leadership buff. It just doesn't work out. So we'll definitely see how it works out here. You can see the breath attack. They're doing a lot of damage to the chaos spawn, actually killing them all, which really sucks to happen right off the bat. You can see they lost about 2,000 HP, which is pretty ludicrous. A very, very lucky or very well timed breath from the Red Duke. My opponents build a bunch of zombies in the Tithe in the front, Sternsmen and Graveguard in the second line, single leader of Karenates for the Terror, uh, double Corpse Guard with an Holy Lodestone, of course, great buffs and heals, Bats, a Necromancer with uh, with uh, his usual kit, essentially Forbidden Rod, Raised Dead, Invocation of the Heck, and then the uh, AoE buffs, Crypt Horrors, uh, which is an interesting choice. They do apply poison, they have AP, but still, it's not something you see nowadays. <laughs> and then the Red Duke up in the sky, and a single unit of Blood Knights on the flank. And the Red Duke, once again, raised dead and uh, raised dead and Invocation of the Heck, though he also has Foe Seeker, uh, El Seif, and uh, Potion of Strength. Out on the flank, though, my opponent gets a very nice catch on my Centigrade Throwing Axe, because I was not paying good enough attention, and so I'm going to pay the price. But fortunately for him, this means his Blood Knights are now in a terrible spot. They're going to get caught out by the Hunger Spears. Um, and the Minotaurs with the Opens. The Minotaurs with the Opens are going to take these knights to Pound Town. Uh, if we quickly look, you can see just how quickly they're going to be st start losing HP. They're down already by about 2,000 HP. In the space of just a few seconds, those Minotaurs, of course, the Hunger Spears will be oversaturating them, making it hard for them to get good damage on the Minotaurs. And uh, now the Sons of Gorus, you know, swinging around. And my opponent trying to zone them out with these zombies, but it's not really going to work. We're going to swing around the flank and be able to chase down these Blood Knights, who are, of course, much slower. In the meantime, in the pits, we're going to get a nice little Soul Blight, doing quite a bit of debuffing these Graveyard. Uh, making all of them a lot weaker. We're going to get our first summon of Chaos Spawn coming down. Uh, and we're going to be able to jump into the back of these troops and start whittling them down. You can see our uh, our casters, you know, they're racking up the kills. They're grinding it out into chariots and uh, doing surprisingly well. So my opponent is going to dive in on Morgur, trying to snipe him out. Uh, doing a bit of damage, but of course Morgur has regen and respectful melee stats, so he's not too concerned. Uh, unfortunately, the Karenates, you know, they're holding up. The, the Karenates are a big nuisance here, because they've got, of course, very solid physical resist, uh, and they cause terror as well, so, you know, you gotta be careful. Vacation neck goes down, just gonna keep them in the fight longer than we would like. 
Fortunately, my opponent does loop. Blood Knights here being slaughtered in the pits. Uh, certainly some centaurs lying there, but much, much worse for the knights. And uh, all of a sudden, things are going to look rather bad. A flock of doom going down, just going to start melting these troops. We're going to get a nice flank charge. Minotaurs very open, start hewing through these guitars. Um, spears coming in, sons of gores coming in. And uh, things looking all in all pretty good. Uh, Bray Shamans are actually going to pull out to go after the Necromancer. Uh, not really what they're meant for, but uh, they can do surprisingly well. We've got Jagged Dagger going, so we've got a lot of wins of magic between the two Jagged Daggers. You can see we're going to be doing quite a bit of damage. 47 kills, 25. Not, not bad. You know if a lot of it is against Chaff. Over here, the bats finally are going to snare our centigors, basically because I lied on them. I realized I had to get rid of those bats sooner or later. So we stop our centigors with throwing axes, and we're going to charge in the Sons of Goros to quickly get rid of these bats. And they basically immediately melt. Which now frees up my throwing axes, and I can now deploy them. I can now shift them and go after the meteor targets. Taking a quick glance over the battlefield, you can see Morgur anchoring things here in the center alongside the Chaos Spawn. Of course, the Chaos Spawn being unbreakable here, a huge boon. We've got three units of Chaos Spawn uh, just holding the line here. Surprisingly, I think the Fungor Spears have been holding out. I'm not entirely sure how they held this long, but uh, the Chaos Spawn uh, just anchoring things. Not necessarily raking up all 47, 54 kills, definitely getting some kills, but um, probably not as much as we'd like. But uh, doing a good job. They're, they're, they're anchoring things. They're holding the line where otherwise we would be long gone. They're going to help deal with the can rates as well. On the flank over here, my opponent does finally slash his way through my own spears with the Graveguard, but the Chaos Spawn are still there. They've got 51 kills and they're not going to go down without a fight. Uh, and in come the Sons of Gorus, getting a meaty rear charge on the back of these Sternsmen. Uh, while the throwing axes start whittling down the Corpse Guard, and my opponent is definitely starting to run out of troops. He's starting to run out of... Uh, bodies, which is very nice. And of course with the Red Duke, one of the, usually you'll see, I think, Manfred uh, and, and no Necromancer, I think. Just because you get better wins of magic and you can have more money and open for other things, but uh, the Red Duke, despite everything, you know, he's got limited wins of magic, so he's going to start struggling here a little bit. Potion of Strength going down, giving him a huge buff to weapon strength, but of course Morgur, kind of hard to hit, kind of going to get knocked around and blocked and all sorts of things. Unfortunately, the Sons of Gorus here take quite a beating, which was really not good. Um, I, I wanted them to get out, but now they're trapped between the Sternsmen on one end and the uh, zombies on the other. So, not, not where we want to be in life. Uh, the last of the Sternsmen, though, will go down there. <laughs> As will the last of the Chaos Spawn pretty shortly. <laughs> I've been just doing an absolute champion work here against the Red Duke, just blocking up these troops. Uh, and at this point, we're kind of going to start rolling up. You can see the uh, throwing axes just pestering the Red Duke, chipping away, hitting him in the back as he's trying to flee. Ungor Spears recovering, pulling back in. You can see the last of the Chaos Spawn here going down, dragged into the muck. Uh, Morgur's going to pull in as well, and he's going to help out. He's going to smack down these guys. A nice little breath going down, not really doing much of anything. And the uh, Centaurs here are going to jump in on the course where the Holy, holy Lotus Stone, start whittling it down. Uh, it doesn't really stand much of a chance, and now our throwing axes can start working. We can start nuking the Red Duke. Uh, our Ungor Spears, they just can't can't hold, but the uh, Minotaurs of the Grave Opens are going to dive in, they're going to start beating on the Red Duke. Uh, that's another problem, I suppose, here for the Beastmen, is the fact that uh, all these small units, all this annoying stuff, like the uh, zombies, really makes life difficult for, say, units like Minotaurs. But normally, they, they kind, of, kind of dumpster the Red Duke, if they, against any other faction, if, against the Dragon, they just swap it. But, um, like this, you know, he's, he's saturated, he's defended. One of the things I, I'd say is, and, and at this point my opponent does simply decide to GG out, which makes sense, he was essentially out of troops, but I think it's this is one of the few matchups where I, and I don't, generally when people complain about the missing piece menu, it's, I'm not too, I'm like, th it would be nice to have them, but oh well, what can you do, it doesn't really matter, it doesn't make much difference, but I think this is one matchup where if the Beastmen were given the Gorgon, it would be much, a much better situation for them, because the Gorgon, a regening, anti-large AP unit, um would be incredibly valuable. The fact of the matter is that right now the Beastmen, they, they've got Minotaurs with Grey Weapons, which are nice, but they can be zoned out fairly easily um, by Chaff, and then you've got nothing else. You've got Throwing Axes, which have very short range, and once again can be zoned out and by faction. Um, you've got Centigors with Grey Weapons, who can get zoned out rather easily. You've got Gorbals that are terrible. Um, and quite frankly, against say the Red Duke, you just get hit by LC. If it's Manfred, he'll just he hit you with spear leeches over and over, and eventually your leadership will give way. You're going to rout. So, uh, personally, not that. F I, I I think that's it's a big this is a big challenge. I think the Gorgon it wouldn't really make a huge difference in other matchups because there you in most other matchups you can kind of get by with just Minotaurs. It doesn't matter. They're almost the same unit. Uh, for th those other matchups, probably better because they. Uh, they'd probably be be better because they uh, 
have more models, so they're doing more damage. But but in this one situation, I do think that the fact that the Beastmen do not have a Gorgon, that they don't have a competitive single model uh, large hunter, or an AP unit, or mobile AP unit, whatever, it is a huge issue. But uh, regardless, getting into my opponent, definitely this build worked. I, I don't know if it was great. Uh, the Bray Shamans did okay. Uh, the Chaos Spawn held up really, really nicely, backed up by the Ongor Spears. But I think part of it might have been that my opponent didn't rear charge me <laughs> as soon as he probably should have. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, though. So that's the build, you know, I was I was fairly pleased with it. Not much to say. Uh, my opponent's build, definitely not necessarily the most competitive, but um, I, I think maybe it could work. The Chaos Spawn, just because of the, their anchor ability, or their ability to not break, maybe they could pull it off. Um... As for my opponent's build, like I, I have said before, I think Mortar Ascension is the way to go. <laughs> you could easily make some a few cuts here. You could basically go with almost the same composition. Dump the Crypt Horrors, get a, another unit of... Dump the Crypt Horrors and the uh, Cairn Wraiths, get another unit of Blood Knights. Uh, dump the Corpse Carts and the Bats. Or actually, dump the Corpse Carts and the Necromancer, get a Mortis Engine. You can keep the Bats, maybe swap the Red Duke out for Manfred. Uh, and you're basically set. You don't even need to do much else. Uh, if you want a Terror Geist, you can make it work as well. There's ways to make it work, but uh, that, that's my two cents there. That, that's my critique. Yeah, that's a good game. There's a va veil in here. I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. hope you enjoyed watching it. Uh, if you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe below to keep up with additional content. If you have any comments, any criticism, any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I will do my best to respond. Um, I do thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.